Al's new beta game is out right now, so I had to get him to stop yelling. I don't even know why he's up. Normally he's asleep at this time of the morning. What? Oh, Barb a ball of what are you saying, Barb? Hi, Facebook land. How you doing? Facebook. Say hi to Facebook, Shanna. Hello, Facebook land. Oh, God. You make me just want to. Mm. <gasps> the, the one person that might be in there watching us, yeah. Jeffrey Dean. That's, oh, Cheese might be in there, you know. Cheese. Yeah, Cheese has been hanging out over at the Rockfin. All right. Good for Cheese. Uh, just a uh, uphill media public notice. We will be streaming on Twitch TV, Twitter. <sighs> Rockfin and Facebook, as you know. And what's the other one? We're on Twitch TV, right? Twitch. 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 Son of, son of a Twitch. Looks, And I'm going to put this in the, the YouTube chat. Looks like everyone had a chatty cafe today. Hearts, good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's a Friday. It's a Friday. I can't get fried anymore. My brain won't handle it. Sirius is in Tulsa. Sir oh, I did not know that. Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Ian. Can you make the shout outs to our chat today, Shanda? I will make the shout outs. Thank you. All right. Going live in five, four. Oh, let me get muted. Three. I never mute. Stop the censorship. Mm. Where is it? Here we come. Walking down the street, we get the funniest looks from <laughs> everyone we meet. God, you gave me an earworm, Shanda. What the hell? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Why am I so red? I look like I've been out in the sun. Oh gosh, I think I have you. I have I, I have some Kashama blush on you. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, she had some good blush yeah, going. She, on. Yeah, yeah, that's Oz blush. I got it all over you. How are you today? Uh, you know, it's Friday. I slept in a little bit late, but. Uh, I'm ready to do this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, good. They can hear us, the monkeys. Hee <laughs> hee. Good morning. Say hi to everybody, Shanda. Yay. Good morning, guys. You can hear me? Yeah. I think they can. I think. I would hope so. Gosh. Why is half of my hair missing? Jilly, Jilly says, beauty sleep doesn't work. <laughs> it hasn't, no. wor hasn't worked on me for about 50 years, Jilly. <laughs> No, normally I get up between 4.30 and 5 every morning so I can start working on the show. But because we've been chasing our ass all week, I haven't had to work on the show because we've had stuff piled up. God, and it's hard to chase your ass, isn't it? <laughs> Good morning, Melissa. Who was first in today, Shanda? I, well, at first I thought it was serious, but then I had the top chat on, not the um, live chat. So it was actually Al Walski, but oh, serious, you get a top yeah. chat award, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, you first dinners. Yeah, we, yeah. we got uh, J9 Campbell and Annie Ann, Al Walski, serious, Jelly Love. Annie Ann. Melissa H., good morning. Barbara, good morning. Barbara Hart. Keith. Bar Jeez. 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 Oh, yeah, look at all those people in there. Yeah. Oh, busy yeah. chat already. Oh, busy chat. They got, I, I said they must have had their chatty cafe this morning. I don't think I spelled that right, but <laughs> they get the point. So, yeah, yeah. So I think we can. <laughs> oh, my God, Shanda, that's a commitment getting up at five. Yeah, I'm just I'm just starting to drool at five. So. Oh, I know. I see you come in about seven seven 15. yeah i know i i but i get up in the middle of the night and i send you uh tidings i know great joy, so <laughs> yeah that's the thing what the hell anyway like what the hell is oz doing up at one o'clock in the morning let's talk about the card <laughs> the card 
Get the card. Here's the card. card. Yeah. This uh, came from Professor uh, Wolf, and this is Democracy at Work. This is an old card from like a year ago that I found in my memories, but uh, still applies. Still applies. I think that's a card that we've been suffering through since the 60s. Um, you know, it's just we're getting much down. I love that card. And I, you know, with that, I had to bring a card in myself. Actually, it's a it's a self-portrait of this country. Uh, this is called <laughs> bipartisanship, you know. So um, who does that work out for, Shannon? Who does bipartisanship work out for? Not not for us. No. The 1%. 1%. Absolutely. And can you guess which group are the Democrats? <laughs> Or who they work for, at least. <laughs> or who they work for. And, uh, of course, the Republicans are there on the left. Um, that would be my left. No, that would be my right. See, this is my right. Okay, so, yeah, the Republicans, are, they're up there. Bl <laughs> little blood. You need to draw an L and an R on your shoes. Yeah, shit. I need, God, I need a compass in my eye sockets. Keith Hayes says, not chatty. I just got fucked with by Homeland Security. No. Oh, God, Keith, what happened? Did you threaten to spray Astro glide on your local politician? <laughs> Shit, it takes hardly nothing anymore to get oh, uh, get them on your doorstep. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, this is, we 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 must watch what we say these days because as you're going to see in our next story, it's going to get you in trouble sort of kind of. Yeah. yeah. So, uh yeah, let's uh what so what's what's the big bad today we got on deck? Is it Oh, let's have some Jeopardy first, shall we? Jeopardy? Yeah, let, let's have a little funny, and then we'll get into the serious, uh, you know, yeah. unraveling of the fabric of the United States. Yeah, shit, we need a good laugh or a bad laugh or whatever kind of laugh this is. Welcome back to Political Jeopardy. I'm your host, President Donald Trump. <laughs> let's start the show. Barack Obama is in the lead with minus three trillion dollars. Uh, I'd like to say hello to my lovely wife, Michelle. Next, with negative two trillion dollars, Bill Clinton's wife, Hillary Clinton. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi. She wishes she had that body. And finally, <laughs> with negative one trillion dollars, the man who refuses to answer a question, Joe Biden. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know after the election. Let's take a look at the categories. Did I do that? Benghazi emails and Jeffrey. China Gate, Pizza Gate, Obama Gate, Corn Pop Hunter and Joe, and Knee Pads. Joe, we'll start with you. Uh, Mr. Reagan, I'll take a, did I do that for a hundred? The answer is, Joe Biden has served this country for decades. Uh, I'll let you know after the election. I'm sorry, that's a wrong answer. Hillary, what is China? Correct. <laughs> I, I, I'll take, did I do that for 200? No, it's not your turn. It's okay. He can have my turn. <laughs> All right. The answer is Joe Biden. You wrote this in 1994. Uh, I'll let you know after the election. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. You got it. Was the crime bill? Which was the crime bill? I'll let you know after the election. Oh my God. Um, we have a a, a terrific uh, comment here in the chat. It's uh, by Jilly Love, and I have that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our that's our no blue no red no or blue no matter you that's such a such a play on words great coin you still have the lower third for shama on the yeah, deck yeah i know damn engineers broken um <laughs> anyway yeah so much for jeopardy today with uh, host yeah. uh, host donnie trebek um, Donnie Trebek. Yeah, so uh, we're going to go into uh, what the hell's going on is it's like censorship hell the last few days what's going on yeah, we got a qu quite a few stories, you know, um, since we didn't do a show yesterday, we really didn't get to cover the the Hunter Biden drop uh, and censorship on YouTube and Twitter. But then following that, we, we've had some fallout for the progressives. And so we'll get to all of that. Yeah, let's let's hear what our 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 standby here has to say about it. Some very big news out of the FCC. Let's throw this up there on the screen. Section 230, which is kind of the legal infrastructure that governs the entire internet, essentially says that large tech technology companies, places like YouTube, where you're most of you are watching this, but Twitter, Facebook, and others, are not responsible for most of the content on their platforms. <laughs> essentially, that user-generated content, they cannot be sued over that. Now, this has been very much come into dispute around their content model moderation because people are saying that if they oh shit 
some very big news what out happened? of happened? I don't know. That was enough, though. So go ahead. Yeah, no, we got the point. The point is, is uh, yeah, they're allowed to do whatever the fuck they want, yeah. and FCC is going to back them. Yeah, shit pie is going to, you know, don't, don't, don't think the, the FCC is going to err on the side of the public ever. We know this. Um, but there's one point I wanted to make clear, and is this, is this, what's this guy's name from Sesame Street? Is that the... Animal. Is that animal? animal? Is that animal? That's animal. animal. Okay. <laughs> you know that thing inside your head that keeps you from saying stuff? Probably, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Mine's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Believe we know this. We have known this for a while. Yeah. Well, I'm broken in so many ways, but animal puts it out there. Uh, pretty, pretty much right on. Um... Uh, you go ahead. This is your baby. <laughs> oh, not my baby. Yeah, it's your baby. Okay. Actually, I would probably party and hang out with him. He looks like he has a good time. Oh, shit. <laughs> so as you may have seen, Hunter Biden uh, stupidly left his laptop in a repair shop for three years. And somehow they got a hold of it. There's emails on there, you know, doing the whole pay for play, proving that uh, Biden did pretty much a... Uh, buy him this spot which we already knew i don't i don't think this story told us much that we didn't know we knew he liked strippers we knew he liked drugs we knew that there was pay for play and he was getting paid by this energy conglomerate over in the ukraine for nothing you know i i don't think this story showed us anything we didn't already know but what it did show was how bad the censorship is, is coming down the pike at us well, it sounds like everything that he was doing, I liked that. I liked strippers. I liked partying. I liked all that stuff. It's pretty normal for, well, it was pretty normal back in the 80s, I guess, for me. I, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, apparently he's got an affinity for uh, strippers and crack. So are we are we classless uh, shills for putting those pictures up there? Like, uh, I think Crystal was clutching her pearls about these pictures. Um, I... Whatever, they're freaking hilarious. Yeah, I mean, they're the one with a crack pipe in the mouth. Yeah, that's posed. Um, all these are posed, and he didn't give a shit at the time because he's Joe Biden's son. So that's just right. it's, it's right. and he was high on crack. It's kind of <laughs> kind of a non-story for and seriously for people who have addictions. You know, uh, uh, life's tough, and then you die. He's got some personality flaws. Who doesn't? Yeah. But uh, you know, we're not out there making fifty thousand um, a month for a no-show job yeah. and uh, you yeah, know, toting yeah, the VP's son. Yeah, the hard facts. You know, it's it's uh, like you know, and Bill Clinton got exposed for the cigar deal with Monica Lewinsky in back in the nineties. Once you open that can of worms about people's private lives. There's one thing, but if they are a high high profile figure, like the most powerful person in the world, that you better keep your cigars in the box and stop this. Well, kind that's of just shit. it. As a woman, I never allow a picture of me to be taken or it, to be on somebody else's device or even my devices, even if I share it or I don't share it. That could possibly get out there. And so he stupidly knew that these pictures were on that laptop. How he didn't, you know, at least go try to retrieve it. Yeah, well, you know, I think Jennifer Lawrence went through that a few years back. There was some nude shots of hers that, although they were probably taken, I don't even know if they were taken without her knowledge, but, you know, once they get taken, they're going to end up on the net if, you know, yeah. they're going to. So, you know, don't uh, do not do any cheesecake shots with uh, your birthday suit on if you don't want them on the yeah. net. But anybody that wants a cheesecake shot of me, in my birthday suit, <laughs> just send me an email and I won't give it to you, okay? No, because... no, we, we're going to save that for the calendar. Oh, my God. Jesus, I wouldn't want to <laughs> do that to somebody. So, anyway, but then, you know, to each his own. <laughs> so, we're going to go here. What's Jimmy's weighing in on this, isn't Yeah, it? I, it's, uh, it's a short clip. All right, let's see what Jimmy's got to say. I can only imagine. Story uh, about Hunter Biden. You know, Hunter Biden is an energy expert, which is why he was on an energy board in the Ukraine, a country the United States just helped overthrow. Anyway, New York Post has the story. Uh oh, we're gonna get so the New York Post got punked. a hold of some secret emails. <laughs> Somehow it got it no, we're not. funneled through Maybe. Rudolph Giuliani of all people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they got a hold of these emails that in that show Hunter Biden being uh, you know the sleazy bag uh, in influence peddler that he is. Right, the Bidens are all corrupt. Yeah. Uh, Ukrainian exec thanked Hunter Biden for opportunity to meet the Veep tab. But this isn't the whole story. The bigger story is that this story 
is being censored by Facebook yeah. and Twitter. So let's get into it. Okay, so uh, I, I did, wasn't going to get into it. You guys can go watch the clip on Jimmy Dore. But the point of it is, is uh, after this came out, Twitter deactivated and took down the Trump campaign official website or official uh, Twitter because they shared this story. Yeah, and Kelly McEnany, is that Nazi Barbie's Twitter got yeah, shut down? Yeah, Nazi Barbie got shut down. A bunch of them did. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a crack executive. Well, exactly. <laughs> Boy, you guys are just full of it today. I love it. <laughs> Melissa, I got, oh, God, I'm going to wait for that to come up and put up there. Uh, let's watch the rest of this. Here we go. Story. No, that's the same uh, one. How about, about, how about Biden? How about this one? Not going to happen. Let's see Bill Maher screaming about free speech. That's not going to happen. Bill Maher is a bought and sold fucking neoliberal right wing tool. Oh, yeah. Pro-war, bloodthirsty imperialist. That's what passes for a lefty comedian in the United States. That's Bill Maher. A right-wing, bloodthirsty imperialist. Who thinks Medicare for All is a fucking crazy, some crazy hippie idea. Because he's got medical. Yeah, and that just happened to be on the same clip, because I brought that one. Shanda brought... Okay, okay, I was like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, no, that was mine. I had already put it in the deck, so Shanda's in my head again, picking stuff, and we just cut it in two different spots, because Bill Maher isn't funny anymore, really. He He never was funny. Well, I think back in the day, maybe he had a couple of, but but it's easy to beat up on the likes of George Bush and Bill Clinton and... The rest of them, and then suck Obama's ass, begging him to come onto the show for the whole term he's in president. And then the last what couple of months he's in the presidency goes on Mar. I mean, really, that's uh, yeah, Bill Mar, uh, a, uh, a shit bag of the worst kind, and he's not that funny in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we go on in this story, Shanda. Okay, so these were funny memes. You guys, the memes were off the hook. The Hunter Biden memes, as much as they were trying to censor them, they they were just piling out. So we were marked safe from abandoning my laptop with pictures of myself smoking crack and emails providing my dad lied in his quick pro quo with the Ukraine. Of course, and everybody knows it. But uh, then we what? What's this? <laughs> Yeah, I love this one. When your dad wrote the crime bill that puts blacks away for decades, but you ain't black. Oh shit! Right on. Uh, yeah, and and here's let's let's get into the censorship aspect of things here, Shanda. I uh, I noticed in the last three or four days that my Facebook groups are getting assaulted by uh, blue check fuckers and Twitter. And Twitter, I had an experience with Twitter, but let's talk about uh, Sista over at the Convo Couch. Yeah, our peeps over at the Convo Couch got completely shut down. So breaking at YouTube is trying to shut the Convo Couch down. They gave us a one strike for election coverage because we covered the corruption in elections. Another for questioning the Epstein Wayfair. Where did we uh, make accusations? And and China Bolivia videos are also restricted. And then I think there's another. And for now, we can't upload or go live on YouTube for at least a week. We have been given no way to fight this. I I was ironically going to upload two videos, one of Joe Biden in the Ukraine and the other on censorship. If you can please at YouTube and post about this and um, others. Yeah, we we need to start screaming our fucking heads off about this. But we knew we we knew. I mean, this is where the whole Julian Assange and not fighting the censorship that that's been rolling down the pike for the last four years is coming for us. And we knew it would eventually come for us. Yeah, absolutely. And what, uh, what, uh, is happening too, as uh, we might be in danger of getting knocked down because we restream their stream yep. on that. But, uh, again, we're not maliciously doing anything. And this, this all, these damn debates that should be public domain. And yeah. that's that's not. Um, so my suggestion here is if you haven't joined the Convo Couch over on Rockfin, please go over and do this. And then please at YouTube 
posts about this and any others yeah. you see. I scorn would them. Yeah. Shame them. Sh scorn them, shame them. Let's get uh, the convo couch up in the numbers uh, on Twitter and everywhere. Let's get that exposure out there for our sister, uh, sister and brothers over at the convo couch, Johnny Sue, Fiorella, and Pasta. We need to support each other because we are who we have because the rich oligarch fuckers are going to choke us all out. So uh, that being said, um, we love our combo couch. Uh, we do, and I offered them our platform if they want to come on during this yeah. downtime for them and do whatever they want to do or come on any of our shows. I, yeah. I you know, I've and, extended the invitation. And and more than welcome. Absolutely, and also we are willing to restream on all five or six platforms their shows, so they don't have to physically come on our show like we're pimping them out because we will do that because we want to because we love them, but we'll just restream their streams back into YouTube so you guys can grab it then you invite everybody this is an attack on our free speech on our democracy another one what democracy we have left and YouTube Twitter Facebook all those blue check sons of bitches they are in cahoots they're owned by the corporations so right so it's the corporations telling and the FCC which we just saw at the beginning of this uh, tell you know forcing these guys i i think to do a lot of this censorship to protect their political interests and so you know keith hayes is in here saying well it, it's not youtube well it is youtube but on the command of, of somebody else yeah correct it's you know and they're going to say well we're just trying to fall it's like copyright oh you can't take someone else's content the debates and all these issues are public domain public transparency we should have the right to decide what's true and false. And again, we're not selling soap or toothpaste or cars. What we are doing is offering points of view, opinion eds, things like this. Whereas the other, other shows like MSNBS and Fox and the rest of them around the world, they're selling pharmaceuticals, fossil fuel, uh, military industrial complex. They're selling products. And what sells their products is is uh, socially conditioning by means of propaganda to the public because it's on your screen in front of you. It must be true, right, Shanda? Right. Well, yeah, and they say YouTube is Google, and don't forget it. And absolutely, YouTube is Google, and uh, yeah, that Rockfin doesn't censor, but here's the problem with Rockfin. Because they're a small up-and-comer, they're probably going to start getting attacked. Yeah. I, I see they're gonna the, get sued. the bigger... Yeah, they're going to get ate up. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna go in there and say, oh, Rockfin's this fly, Rockfin, this gnat on yeah, our back. Yeah, and if they can't shut it down, they'll just buy it and co-opt it. Yeah, they'll buy it and co-opt it. And, and and again, this is why we need to have our own, own co-op with people like in our chat and everybody else's damn chat that's in social media. I don't care if you like us or not. We're going to support you. We are going to support you in the sense of... The, in the areas that we are ideologically joined in. And that's Medicare for all, getting out of these fucking wars, the health of the planet, um, uh, you know, the, the actual real economy, you know, all the causes that we're all, you know, and I know we all have a little bit of difference. We don't have to agree on everything, but we need to join our strengths and our talents, and we need to come together with, uh, you know, um, a... F uh, how does how does Franklin a federation of independent media? That's what we need. You know, call it what you wish, but we need to come together and do that because uh, right. it's us against them, and we're we're the little guys on the block. It I, is. You know, yesterday, what a half hour before my uh, Shama Sawant interview. You guys can go check that out. I'm sure it's below this uh, this link. But I, I got hit by a Trojan horse, and all I did was clicked on Google to get uh, into Facebook to send the Zoom link to Jason Call. And as soon as I clicked Facebook on the top tab, my computer flipped out. I had mass windows popping open. It kept saying, it was, was talking and saying, uh, you have a Trojan horse, it's shut, uh, locked up your screen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I literally had to dump the whole system. We were freaking out. I don't have anything on this computer. This is a brand new system that I haven't put anything on. So that literally came straight through Google. Yeah, yeah. It was a browser malware attack. Uh, at least that's what I thought it was. And we did, right. we did the, we did the thing. We got it cleaned out. Osama says FCC controls broadcast airwaves, not the internet. Um, I think indirectly they control the internet. Yeah, it's indirect. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, but kill. but uh, the Mike Figueroa's got a good uh, couple of clips on a, G a shit pie, the head of the FCC, 
And, uh, you know, when you figure, Osama, I would just say that, you know, who, who, who runs the world? Those same people like Clear Channel, they control the airwaves. Who is vested in internet things? Who has taken YouTube and turned it into a tool of these mainstream media outlets that are on the airwaves? The same people. So, you know, they might not, right. you know, they might, they might not control what happens on the internet at this point, but they indirectly do. It's just their backhanded way of puppeteering the whole fucking country, the world, as far as I'm concerned. And I will say this, you know, if we have freedom of speech, I look at the internet as our town hall, and that should be public, uh, controlled by the public, not by these damn corporations. But there's always right. some way they're going to backhand, and they're going to... Uh, well, they've always done it, Oz. Always. always. A newsprint was controlled yeah. by Randall Hearst. Randall Hearst, you know, yeah. Look at what came out of that. <laughs> and then TV in the 60s TV, and 70s. Yeah. Same was shit. 80s, 90s yeah. was all controlled. This is just the next step. You know, We got four or five years out of the internet uh, of actual freedom of speech and now it's time for them to clamp down because they don't want us having freedom of speech period no they don't and i and i will say just look at what happened you referred back to tv of the early 60s and stuff well they blackballed all those people actually who were talking the real thing uh with the mccarthyist shit I mean, look right. at uh, look at Spider Man's dad, and look at uh, what's Ernie Kovacs and some of the other ones that were, you know, actually telling the truth. They weren't sucking. Is Snowden a traitor? You can't even smell Snowden, right? Snowden, Snowden, Snowden. Who's Snowden? Snowden, Snowden's not a traitor. Yeah, uh, he retracted it, but yeah. still, if you think Snowden's a traitor, you're you're not paying attention. No, I, they're whistleblowers, and they don't the the the. Uh, overlords the world overlords uh don't like what these whistleblowers are doing why do you think obama jailed so many whistleblowers i mean Ob exactly Ob I exactly yeah, yeah don't tell the people what's actually going on and if you do you're the problem yeah no snowden's not a traitor yeah annie ann no snowden is not a traitor thank you annie ann thank you annie ann um yeah and and again this 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 screenshot is from my facebook and I, uh, I manage like 20, well, I'm admin in shit, 20 different groups. And this is happening in several of my main groups. But Jim, Jimmy, and I took out his last name, uh, shared information that's been reviewed by, reviewed by USA Today, PolitiFact, Hardy Har Har, The Dispatch. And we've added a notice to the post so others can see that it is false. Learn more on how to fact check on words. Of, um, do you trust? Well, that's not the National Guard that was in Portland. It's, you know, they did that on purpose because they know the National Guard will not shoot against their own freaking people. So, yes, they, it is mercenary forces that are coming in there. And you can never convince me otherwise. Yeah. Tell me something, USA Today. Who were those uh, militarized uh, in uniform people that came in those unmarked vans yeah. and hauled people off the street? Uh, fed, false of fact, the federal agents in Portland are not mercenaries. Well, I think there were mercenaries too. Maybe you're half right, you fuckers. So anyway, that's just one instance. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Yeah, guys. it's going to get worse. And these are all, you know, it's like the Daily Beast. I mean, uh, isn't Hillary Clinton's uh, offspring uh, on the board of the Daily Beast? Yeah, I yeah, think I, so. Um, this little twit. I, uh, I ran across this last night uh, again, and it was on Black Bear News. Um, oh, Kevin. Well, yeah, Kevin. But uh, if uh, so, you uh, so you 350.org, uh, Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein are on the progressive side of life. Thank you. Think very hard. You may be disappointed. Now, I posted that, right? I posted that. I tried to put it on Twitter three fucking times and it kept going wrong go wrong go wrong go wrong and it was westworld and then i got this last one something's wrong but don't uh but don't first let's give it another shot so i gave it another shot so it didn't work so twitter is banning the discourse truth. yeah the truth from uh planet of the humans and this is a direct uh you know result because it was a gray zone article by Ma max blumenthal exposing some of our so-called allies in the movement for saving the planet here shanda did you read that article 
No, but I totally agree with Max Blumenthal on this. I've heard his perception on it many times. Yeah, and this is Naomi Klein and Angel Garari, Garari, Secretary General of the Organization Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, on November 4th, 2015, Garari was a former finance minister in the administration of Mexico's neoliberal formal, formal president, uh, Ernesto oh, yeah, Zeto. Yeah, Guerrero won the OECD's Globalist of the Year. Globalist, what a, what a wonderful bad award. Dude, bad dude, yeah. This guy's, this guy's a bad dude. Now, Naomi, what are you doing? You know, taking well, a picture. you know, I've met Naomi. I've had a couple of conversations with her, and... As smart as they think she is and how perspective or perceptive she is about what's really happening, I think she's one of those that's along the lines of Norm Chomsky and Robert Reich and, you know, all these. They like nice things. Well, they yeah. like their comfy lives. They like their power uh, in their time in life on the planet. And, you know, I uh, shock doctrine. Great book. OK, but. You know, you look at the background of this stuff and how did they come about? I still like Naomi Klein until I don't until. But this is really, really bad. This article, I highly recommend you guys read this article on the planet of the humans discussion. And we've had fights, fights, discussions in our groups about this before. I think the planet of the humans was more focused on how capitalism is what's destroying the fucking planet. And if you want to st do a real Green New Deal, not greenwashing, then yeah. you got to do something about the capitalism. And I think that was the message of the movie. Am I wrong, Shanda? No, I, I think you're absolutely right. I, I, they did a really good job of pointing out that it doesn't matter. We're still mining these, these, you know, these resources that we need to create the for green energy you know so yeah. either way we're still we're still stripping the earth we're still polluting uh there was a great chat uh witness statements coming out about the guy who killed the the trump supporter cops didn't id themselves just just jumped out of the car and started shooting melissa h you're absolutely, absolutely right absolutely um, right i will melissa. grab that story and bring it for either no joke or beauty and the boomer tomorrow because it's an important story and we've been talking about it since it happened we knew we knew they just that was retaliatory they gunned him down you know that's here in washington state even though the first shooting was in portland but he came home to washington and yeah they just pulled up they rolled up on him and they they executed him yeah uh, red sea socialists they are academics not activists well you know what yeah but yeah they they are they're 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 one face of act activism from the academics point of view in my opinion i maybe I'm they sure hang out in a lot of the activist circles i mean I tell yeah. you i've encountered them at many of activist yeah. events yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. I, you know it, yeah it's like the sunrise movements uh, supporting the shit out of joe biden who doesn't support their idea of a green new deal which is greenwashing in a lot of respects yeah. but you know this is all the learning process and i don't want to eat up our own who are trying to achieve the goals yeah. but if our own makes mistakes and missteps we have to help them as we would expect them to help us get out of that and get on the yeah. right trail you know this is 30 years ago i thought bill clinton was a good guy uh, you yeah. know 15 years ago i thought barack obama was a good guy so oh yeah 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 a up, absolutely you know? i i, I want to keep my mind open and i don't want to come out and trash these guys but uh our friend kevin uh, I've, okay. I've, I've engineered for Kevin. I've talked to Kevin. He's a good man. Uh, I yeah, believe. No, Kevin's a great guy. I've been I, on and, a and, and I know a lot of people go over there and watch Black Bear News. Keep doing, sign up, subscribe. Throw him a couple of bucks if you can. Um, like I said, we're not always out here begging you guys for money and stuff. But uh, again, it's help our friends at least if you can. And uh, then if there's any change left in the bottom of the couch, throw it at us. So that's well, like Jimmy says, nobody's got a Klein was appointed to 350.org's right, board of directors. Oh, Klein. Is that when she started having a change of mind? Is that what happened? Oh, she got she got in bed with some Rockefeller money. She joined oh, forces with the environmental organization incubated by the Rockefeller Brothers Fund and supported by the Ford Foundation. As 350.org founder Bill McKimmon puts it, unless we go oh. after the money pollution, no campaign against real pollution stands a chance, Klein wrote at the time. Klein's 2015 book and documentary film on climate change, the, This Changes Everything, was initially launched as a project called The Message. It was supported with hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants.
from a who's who of major family foundations that help sustain McKibben's political apparatus. Wow, look at all these foundations. <clears throat> wow. And look at all, all these investment uh, groups and people. I mean, not just the ones that are highlighted. Uh, highlighted the Seth McFarland Foundation, Schmidt Family uh, Foundation, Seth. Rockefeller Brothers Fund, Wallace Global Fund, <coughs> Vivian Westwood, Pamela Anderson Fund. Uh, Pamela Foundation, Anderson? Chorus Foundation, Oak Foundation. Uh, in one of several grants to the book and film project, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund contributed $50,000 to the message via nonprofit pass-through called the Sustainable Markets Foundation. Um, you know, all right, Shanda, you go first and then I'll, then I'll go. Wow. That was quite shocking. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So yeah. Okay. I get it now. She's got all those foundations, but the Seth MacFarlane one, oh, that one hurt, but I always knew he was kind of a sellout. He, he, he kind of skirts around like the whole pizza gate and Holly weird satanic bullshit. So I'm not shocked about that. Well, here's the thing. I used to think, you know, when I was going up in management back when I was being a capitalist, a young capitalist, a young Turk. Oh, God, I said young Turks. Ooh, uh, a young, young Turk. Turk back in my youth when I was in my 20s, I was buying into all this bullshit. The thing of it is, is I was raised by uh, an honest man, a fighter for, you know, the unions and uh, his people. And I have quickly got over that shit and I saw the light. And uh, what I tried to do, long story short, was work my way up into management so I thought I could help, you know, the masses, you know, the lower, you know, the, the lower management and the people under them, the workers. Well, that's a noble thing to do, but it does not work that way. Um, and maybe this is what they're doing by we need this money to get the word out. But actually, it's like voting for the lesser two evils over and over again to me. You're propagating this thing to keep going on. You're actually using the, their weapons against yourself by doing that. That's my opinion. I don't know. Maybe that's a twisted way to serious. look at it. I uh, Yeah, Sirius. Thank you, Sirius. Five bucks from Sirius. I do what I can and will always support my friends who oh. fight with me. And we'll be fighting with you and yeah, everybody right. else. Thank you so much, Sirius. Again, um, we appreciate that support <laughs> so much. Shanda, do you trust any celebrity charities? Fuck no. You know, God. I don't trust hardly any charities. They all turn out to be crooked. It don't matter who they are. Red Cross. Yeah, oh God, yeah. they've been yeah. they've been co-opted. This is this is the problem. What do we do? I mean, we want to support these charities. The four charities that I support have supported over the last twenty years: the women's the women's care shelter. Okay, that was one. The Women's Care Shelter, the Alternative Humane Society, because they're right. the ones that are the dregs of what the Humane Society throws out on the street, okay? Right. All right, then the Fisher House. Now, they're questionable, but they help the families of troops that have died in war stay uh, at their, you know, at their homes. And then my local damn food bank. That's yeah. like voting down ballot to me. That's what no, I focus on. The local on. food bank's so important. Yeah, yeah. that's such a charity I absolutely, absolutely do support is local yeah. food banks. Yeah, and you just think about it. Just support who you want. But these Hollywood charities where they've got so much damn money they can afford to do it. I mean, the Seth MacFarlane Foundation, the Pamela Anders. Yeah, I mean, Pamela, Pamela had her boobs reduced or they had those things taken out. Good for you, Pamela. You shouldn't have to put it in the first place but well i don't I, you know she is such a, a staunch supporter of julian assange so I, I might be tempted to just research and see if hers is corrupt you know what she might not be and there's the there's the, there's the rub because a lot of these people are supporting like assange and and people like that so are we going to ding them for their mistakes they make mistakes they're not perfect i you know i know yeah. i i'm i'm just i'm the most perfect piece of shit on the face of the earth. i never make a mistake but you know <laughs> i mean but once we once we realize that about ourselves and i know shanda you're the same way you're you're perfect too um now i try to be perfect that's my problem yeah well i, I still say you're practically perfect in every way anyway uh let's let's get out of here i think they got the point and i'm starting to monologue so yeah uh, that was that was a great thing on the view when she said down with the view yeah. yeah it was it truly was so again we're very like naomi klein I, I tell you what josh fox though 
fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Little, yeah. He, the guy's got a dad. Mr. Gasland's got an ego as big as the Im Empire he State He does. Building. I've met him in person a couple times. Yeah. His ego is so huge. Yeah, it's terrible. And he's doing it for Josh Fox, moreover. He, he's figured out a way to greenwash his Green New Deal stuff with the Gasland and fracking. Well, pocket. I can't stop it, but I'm going to make a lot of money off of it. So that's how I'm going to do it. So, you know, again, that's... So what, what is this? More rising, I This think. is... Yeah, more rising. But I wanted to give a shout out to our... Our, our our honorable leader from the last presidential uh, empire really really irked me was when he started talking Obama. about how progressives should think about politics and how voters should think about their role in all of this and it's just a lot of blame shifting like the fault of why they didn't get everything done that needed to be done, it didn't lie with him, certainly, certainly didn't Never. lie with him. Yeah. Didn't lie with members of Congress who, you know, didn't want to go along. He does talk about the Republicans and the obstruction, but on the Democratic side, no, it wasn't, it wasn't any problem there. It wasn't the money in politics and that influence. No, we shouldn't even talk about that, he basically says. It was all the fault of the voters. Let's take a listen. Listen to this. I differ with Bernie. Uh, and even Elizabeth in in in, in our uh, in how Put we that talk about this name stuff in the publicly. same freaking sentence as Bernie. Most of the time, when I didn't get something progressive done while I was president, you ain't it progressive. wasn't because uh, I was getting donations from some special interest or corporation. Bullshit. It because, was. You know, Bullshit. There were a bunch of lobbyists whispering. Bullshit. It was because yeah. I didn't I, I didn't have votes. Did bank? I didn't and have votes. Didn't have votes. I, I, I think sometimes we we uh, attribute the failure of a democratic or pro, uh, uh, progressive. Yeah, you president, keep telling yourself that uh, not getting something done to somehow he uh, he <laughs> and hopefully at some point she yeah. is being influenced by these other folks. You were when in fact it's just that we don't yet have the votes and the clout. Ah, oh, so, bullshit. Progressives, you if you want progressive legislation, didn't they control the House and the Senate and for what three years after the president is elected? Under Obama, it, two years. I don't want to put the cart before the horse, <laughs> but you guys know how frustrated I would be. It's frustrating when progressives, feeling frustrated, would then sit out the midterms. <laughs> now I have fewer Democratic votes. Now I've lost the House. Now I've lost the Senate. That is not the right reaction. He oh, so it's was our frustrated. Fault. It's our fault. He was frustrated. How about the millions of people who still do not have health insurance today? How about them? Mm -hmm. Think they were a little frustrated? How about the homeowners who lost everything because, yeah, the banks got bailed out. And by the way, no one's ever prosecuted. But the homeowners right. didn't get bailed out. How frustrated do you think the people what who about lost all the, the steady brown children middle that are, income are jobs across only the world. to have crappy, precarious service sector, low wage jobs come back because you didn't do a big enough stimulus? How frustrated do you think they are at this point? You had a super majority yeah. in the Senate. You had the House you had a super majority in the Senate. So, okay, why do you think that people didn't show up for you in the midterms? Maybe is it because you didn't actually go out and end the wars? Maybe that. Maybe because yeah. you left millions you still uncovered out. in a health insurance, in a Republican health insurance scheme that is basically a giveaway to industry. Had some improvements, don't get me wrong, but did you ever really fight for a public option or a bigger package? No, you didn't. Do you think that maybe people didn't show up because of the job loss and the inability to do enough to keep people in their homes? How about that? How about a little bit of responsibility for the failures when you had total control of this town that totally demotivated progressives and a lot of other people to not want to come out and bother to vote for you in the middle? Yeah, you know, the, the chat is going crazy right now. Um, I am too. I am too. That's absolute. That was the most whiny fucking statement the guy made. You know, this guy is an excellent speaker. He's an excellent con man. And you know what? For those of you who still love Obama, the black Jesus here, I'm sorry, but the facts speak for themselves. He had control for two, two, what was it, two years? 
You know, m yeah. most of all, four years, just about, but the, he lost it two years into his term. I wonder why, because he was going to do all this hope and change shit in the first whatever year, close Gitmo, all this other crap. Right. And if he wanted to push that public option through, all he had to do was look Tom Daschle and Howard Dean in the eye socket while stepping on their toes and say, you will fucking vote for this. And it would have happened. But Tom Daschle and our arrogant little prick face fucking Howard Dean voted against that. Woo. Anyway, I, I, I can't. I, I love Annie Ann's comment um, as Bo of the fifth call and says, I like Bo, but sometimes he's a little off there. Your, <laughs> your problems are never caused by somebody with less power than you. I like Sirius's butthole picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great Sirius. here i'm gonna show it to everybody here's the butthole picture yeah this is great look at that look at those <laughs> cheeks that's a big butthole that's how we feel as americans butthole. we are getting butthole big time with the no butthole. stimulus and all that crap thank you Sirius. Oh you just God, made my yeah. day what's uh we, we have to watch the rest of this because when i, I pile know. when i pile on to uh obama i gotta finish my thoughts so here we go this isn't as long it's only a minute 30 here and i also love the part at the beginning where he's like, oh, I hate the way that Bernie and Elizabeth yeah, right. to a certain extent <laughs> talk about this, about how it's the donors and it's the lobbyists. Like, he, he sort of objected <laughs> to the idea of even talking in public about the influence of right. money in politics and the influence Are you peddling kidding me? in this town. I mean, look who you staffed your administration he's with. He's single Obama's took Bernie out. Yeah, he did. He absolutely did. I remember this because it inspired me at the time, was he said that one of the first things that he would do in Congress, the first thing was to ban and reform lobbying because he was like, everything <laughs> he stems do it. from lobbying. Yeah. He so did none of the man that. who none was elected yeah. president in 2008 understood that. And I, you know, as a young 16 year old, I was like, yeah, you know what? This kid or this guy knows what he's talking about. Everybody can see it now. Oh no. Why? Because he's sitting in a multi-million dollar mansion in Martha's Vineyard. That's where he probably filmed that video. Bill Clinton he's got did the same million thing dollar to book deal, years ago. Same thing. I'm getting Netflix used to it. Deal. Roll me over and he do it again. These people now. He is one of the, he is a special interest. Yeah. Him and Michelle. Yeah. That's what they are. And we need to understand them and think of them as such. And you can just see how McKinney? corrupting. He came to D.C. with hope and change, but he got changed. He's not. It's not the other way around. Did he? Yeah. I, mean, so I think he was always like maybe. Centrist. Maybe he was all a fool. He spent the whole time trying to like work with Republicans to cut Social Security. <laughs> that's all they ever that they fucking do, and that's what they're continuing more, to so do they now. They wouldn't go along with his. You heard it deal. here. But there was another piece of this that. I Yes, he spent the whole time. Grand bargain, folks. The Democrats. Bill Clinton was working out a deal with Newtie Greenbridge to cut Social Security. Then Bush comes in, doesn't even look at Social Security. Nope. And then Obama comes in and the grand bargains. We're putting Social Security on the table. So any motherfucker out there that wants to argue that point about the Republicans. Social Security. Yeah, really? Social Security. That's Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, Social Biden. Security. Yeah. Can I tell you, I, I got to make a little bit of a change to my prediction of who's going to win this election. Yeah, and that was the end of that clip. I hope everybody got as pissed off and exhilarated and butthole like I do. Yeah, and Guantanamo still lives. Excellent freaking point, Keith. Absolutely. Yeah, it was. Okay, it's straw poll time. This is Friday, October 16th. Shanda, who's going to win the presidential race? So I've been saying Trump for, what, six months now? Yeah, I think about six months I've been saying I, th I think it's going to be Trump. But can I tell you, my perspective is changing. I <gasps> think Trump has effed up the COVID response <gasps> so terribly bad. I, I think that uh, a lot of what he has done in the last month is coming back to bite him in the ass. I don't know if anybody watched the bullshit last night where they had, you know, Forum. Biden and Trump competing on different uh, stations. How stupid. Neither one had anything of substance to say. But uh, I'm beginning to think that the oligarchs have chosen Biden. Um, Rupert Murdoch came out last night and said that Biden will win by a landslide. 
And when the people with money are talking, that's when I listen. Oh, my God. Yeah, I didn't watch the snooze fest over at Biden, but I heard that Trump's uh, at least was more lively. So, oh, you know, Trump doubled down on QAnon. Yeah, you know, yeah he was. I yeah, don't I don't know what QAnon is, but they're against human child trafficking yeah. and all that. And Biden was like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. fracking, 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 uh, fracking. Uh, um, not what, 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 Hunter, 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 Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Hunter. Hunter's a good boy. Hunter's a good boy. Love ah, that's just the way I feel. Anyway, so, uh, uh, yeah, so Shanda's... So, so here's my prediction. I, I think that uh, Trump will call it for himself, but we're going to have multiple swing states that won't certify their election results, um, not even close to the day of or days after because of the mail-in ballots. I think that this might end up in the House of Representatives, and uh, I don't think we're going to have a say in it. Holy shit. So Oz may have been right with his his two predictions. Okay, although I've been leaning with you ladies on Trump, Trump edging right? for Trump, but I said when we started this together and I took the first straw poll six months ago, five months ago with us, I said the only way that Trump is going to lose this election is if he face plants so bad on this pandemic he fucked up with the stimulus. Dude, he if he would have just sent everybody a fucking check, he would have won. I know. And they're still playing that stimulus bullshit ball. And number it's too late. Yeah. Even if they passed it today, it won't get in people's hands. That's that's it. But, you know, again, so if he face plants on the pandemic, otherwise I think he'd be a shoe in to yep. Biden. Are you freaking kidding me? No, coming into January of this year, Trump was strong, man. He had yeah. a good uh, stock market, strong stock market, which everybody believes. No, uh, stock market, scheme. fuck. And yeah. then, you know, and then COVID. Yeah, and uh, COVID. Engineered or not engineered, either way, it came out and kicked his ass. His responses sucked. He's been caught lying over and over, all over and it. over again. His, his disregarding of science and doctors that's yeah. biting him in the ass, his hateful rhetoric and his doubling down on white supremacy. And then you throw in the stimulus and the lack of money in people's pockets. Uh, I think Trump might be done for. Yeah, well, and, and, and your point, which I said three months ago, here, which I said three months ago. <laughs> is that the world oligarch is going to decide who's going to yeah. be president of the United States. And like Shanda just said, when Rupert Murdoch says a landslide for Biden, I'm going, whoa, whoa. Yeah, me too. Uh, okay. so, yeah, those are the people who choose. But here's the thing. So November 4th, we're going to see massive riots. We're going to oh see God. post offices being burned to the ground because there's ballots <laughs> oh my inside God. of them. We're going to see, I mean... You know, stand by and stand ready, whatever he said. And we're going to see that facet on the street. Oh, shit. I'm going to have to get my uh, Ghostbuster cover ready to play behind all these Who's visuals. Who are you going to call? With... I'm just going to stay home. The world can burn around us. Really? I post mean, offices you know. burning down, Shanda? No. I, well, I see them attacking post offices. I really do. Really? Oh, my God. I, um, among other things. But. Yeah, well, be careful. Those damn post office employees have a habit of going postal. <laughs> they go a little postal. We yeah, shit. Anyway, I'm going to stick with Trump edging out Biden, but I think I'm going to lose that. And I don't mind because... It's a hard call when we don't make the call, eyes. Yeah. It's not up to us. Yeah, it's it's the world oligarchy. And, you know, I know it's the antithesis of what I've just said, and I'm just voting against what I said. But I'm going to just go with the long shot there and... Uh, and not that I want that orange sack of monkey dicks to get it I don't again. Either sack of I don't either. Dicks. I don't either. I mean, it's sick. It's sick. So you know, who 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 were we suggested to vote for by? Uh, was it? I, I think it's down to three, and it's your own personal choice. You know, voting is your own personal choice. I will never vote shame anybody. You want to vote for Trump? Vote for Trump. You want to vote for Biden? Vote for Biden. But personally, I think the progressives have Howie Hawkins. Uh, Joe Jorgensen and Gloria LaRiva. I'm, I think those are the three choices. I'm going, I think, I'm looking really hard at Gloria LaRiva. I'm looking really hard at Gloria LaRiva. Yeah, I, she's I, a socialist. Yeah. Um, she's saying all the right things. Yeah. Her foreign policy is yeah. dead on. And once again, you know, I could write in a turd, but I'd rather give it to somebody that at least uh, well, has it. Well, it doesn't matter. Thing. They suppress the third party. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's like it's an exercise in, in the worst kind of masturbation. Okay, what we got here? Polls show that I have a 91% chance of winning. And this is a great... Did, did you do this or was this mine? I think this is mine. I think this was you. Oh, my God. Yeah, I love the dog there. It's just like, hey, Dharma, you 
on to her today? Yeah. So anyway, like the deer, that, that deer, that deer, that deer, the deer, and they, they've got his hair right. This is the first meme where I've seen they've got Joe's hair right. If he, you know, takes out all those plugs, I think that's God. I shouldn't. Does Joe have I, plugs? I never even noticed. Uh, he well, he was bald like five years ago, but or whatever. And now he's got some kind of stuff on top i don't know what i shouldn't make well, any attack on a federal building is a federal i building. know i know i know here i am saying that we don't have that much in the deck today but what's yes i knew we had a lot oh so you're so along. smart uh here's some uh no duh moment we don't have a bonehead for the week but we have a no duh i'm gonna have to get a get a picture for that earth has the warmest september on record and 2020 may clinch the hottest year and um yeah that's uh, kind of a no duh but you know what i heard i think kevin was talking about it yesterday on black bear the oceans are having the heat waves and with that being yeah. said oceans now what do we have in space shanda uh with satellites storms solar storms what's oh, so we're talking about the solar storms i didn't know what we we're talking about actually we're doing okay right now uh we we have uh very little cardinal holes ejecting the solar winds at us but i think that's going to change in the next coming days now didn't you say two weapons platform satellites are getting ready to or did i say that to collide or crash together or something yes yeah we got two satellites i i saw that are getting ready to crash into each other well, all this good news. Let's have some more. This is from Down Under in Australia. Uh, the great unraveling. I never thought I'd live to see the horror of planetary collapse. Um, this is an article by uh, Jolie Gerges. Uh, it breaks my heart. Let me see if I can get it queued in here. So you, you guys can read it. it. I'm going to just read this a little bit of it here. It breaks my heart to watch the country I love irrevocably wounded because of the Australian government's refusal to act on climate change, i.e. the United States government, too. Uh, this is part of a series of essays by Australian writers responding to the challenges of 2020. Now, uh, this, this was from... Oh, God. This, yeah, this it's the Guardian. Yeah, I think it's the Guardian. Australia is sold out so hard. Their politicians are so corrupt if you're paying attention. Yeah, they did. They did. And, you know, to our... And they're in China's pocket. Our sisters, our sisters and brothers who are following the climate, uh, you know, Armageddon that we're going through, um, you know, I just want to remind everybody. But this is, uh, this is Juice Media's take on it, and I'll just put it in here so you guys... Oh, Osama says the satellites nearly missed each other. Oh, they missed each other. Okay, I, I, so is there a chance they'll hit Air Force One or Biden's chat or no? <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I'm going to get this knocked off. You're going to get the NSA on your Hello, side. I'm from the Australian government. We know you want us to transition to renewables ASAP so you can get on with your favourite activity, continuing human life on this planet. Well, good news. There's only one barrier left between you and a clean energy future. It's not technological. It's not economic. Nope, it's us. That's right. After ditching the carbon price, dumping this, refusing this, and trying to kill these, we're proud to bring you Meg, the negligible energy guarantee because it's such a watered down piss week policy that it's literally worse than doing nothing at all which is precisely why our bffs love it so much and keeping them and this bunch of nut jobs happy is pretty much our official energy policy i mean why should we encourage renewables we should let the market decide how we get our energy and nothing says free market like propping up a dying industry with your tax dollars or trying to force this ancient relic to stay open when even its owners are saying coal is dead Sadly, not everyone shares our dream of delaying the transition to clean energy. Like those smug eco-hipsters in South Australia who went and reached their 50% renewable target a decade early and are on track to hit this one by 2025. Just because they invested in shit like the world's biggest lithium-ion battery. Built by combining two resources no longer found in Canberra. Leadership and brains. It's only been running for a few months and is already making us look like dickheads. Whatever. There's one renewable resource we do believe in investing in bullshit bullshit is <laughs> bullshit. what fuels our daily fear-mongering about blackouts and higher prices when in fact renewables are responding to peak demand and reducing electricity bills which is why instead of waiting for us aussies are taking matters into their own hands to get this shit done and it's why the market invested nine billion dollars in 2017 alone into solar farms solar trains solar whatever that is heck even these pricks are investing in solar <laughs> and why not with the prospect of new jobs cheaper bills and avoiding 
Olympic climate change fail, what kind of energy Neanderthal would want to stand in the way of the renewables boom that's coming? Well, us, Australian Government. We've stopped the boats, now it's time to stop the sun. Authorised by the Department for Transitioning to the Dark Ages. Well, there's something comforting about knowing other governments are as corrupt as ours. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, you know, I, sadly, as, as humorous as that may have been to our group, what was wrong with that presentation? And I love Juice Media, but what was wrong with it, in your opinion, Shanda? Uh, all, all the talk about investment into renewable. Jesus, that's why I love you so much. You can tell your husband he's right there. I love you. Because you know what? You're right. Um, we cannot, unfortunately, we cannot dig more shit out of the planet more resources to build cleaner resources because we're adding to everything that's happening now we it takes oil-based products to make renewable based products just the the footprint of all this stuff and i'm not saying i don't know what to say i mean i've got solar panels out here i thought i was doing something good and i did right. i did to a degree but i i didn't it it wasn't carbon neutral at all it was right. it was terrible and 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 in 30 years maybe it'll the scale will go back but i don't want to they're greenwashing this shit and they're selling it so i don't, I don't think it matters Oz. i think it's too late i think it's too late too but i you know again that's uh they'll just get rich and they'll they'll sell us bullshit that they're trying to save the environment and and blah 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 but it's not we're still on the same road yeah it's we're, not we're, gonna we're just totally totally screwed um i just uh i have to show this um for God's sakes, uh, Pelosi got her ass handed to her by Wolf Blitzer, of all people, in my opinion. Right, right. we covered that a couple of days. Yeah, we covered it a couple of days. I just want to show this clip a little bit real quick here of Lawrence O'Donnell sucking. Oh, yeah, I got, I got, I got You just got to make me sick this Friday I, morning. I, 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 I'm sorry. I have to because this is the apologists over at MSNBS. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, the lean forward guy, you know what? He wants you to lean forward so he can stick something. House Speaker in. Nancy Pelosi passed a $3 trillion relief package through the House of Representatives on May 15th. Like all legislation that passes the House, it was delivered to the United States Senate where Mitch McConnell would not even look at it, wouldn't even discuss it. Speaker Pelosi then engaged in negotiations with Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary, Stephen Mnuchin, because Donald Trump is afraid of dealing directly with Nancy Pelosi since oh. this moment right. in the White House cabinet room. Oh, my God. Donald He's Trump, so scared Donald Trump of her. lives in fear of another moment like that, caught by a photographer. But past presidents have really frequently left legislative yeah. negotiations to cabinet members. And so things were moving slowly, but at least they were moving when last week Donald Trump on Twitter declared an absolute end to any negotiations on providing any relief to any American suffering in this unprecedented crisis. Donald Trump shut it all down completely and the stock market immediately crashed. And so Donald Trump, like the drunk driver of Washington negotiations, started swerving back into the traffic. And by Friday, Donald Trump told Rush Limbaugh, quote, I would like to see a bigger stimulus package, frankly, than either the Democrats or the Republicans are offering. And that, of course, was a complete lie. And the White House immediately put out a statement I don't think it was correcting a lie. the president and saying, no, 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 we want a much smaller package than Nancy Pelosi wants. The only person who has created any serious movement in these negotiations is Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Oh, who has moved shit. Down from her comprehensive package of $3 trillion of aid that she passed in May to a current proposal of $2.2 trillion of desperately needed aid, the Treasury Secretary has finally countered that with a proposal of $1.8 trillion, which uses the money very differently from the way Speaker Pelosi's pr proposal uses the money. And that might seem like a bridgeable gap, especially if you look at nothing but the numbers and completely ignore the underlying no, policy differences oligarchy. as the Washington yeah. media always does. $2.2 trillion, $1.8 trillion. Maybe they could meet in the middle. That's the convention, conventional wisdom because that's what Washington usually does. But it is not up to Speaker Pelosi and the Treasury Secretary. In the end, it has to be a three-way negotiation that includes the United States Senate. And Mitch McConnell's offer began at nothing. Zero. Pelosi's team wrote this That's segment. what Mitch McConnell said yeah. he was willing to do while Nancy Pelosi was negotiating. And now Mitch McConnell 
has come all the way up to $500 billion. Mitch McConnell wants less than one third what the White House wants. And in the face of that negotiating dynamic, there are members of the news media who have never, ever <laughs> been in the room during Bingo. legislative negotiations, who have never, ever worked on legislation involving hundreds of billions of dollars of tax provisions and spending provisions designed to help tens of millions of people. And they have negotiating advice for Nancy Pelosi. I've been in those rooms. I was in those rooms many times. Fuck you. You know yeah, what? I was to say, how much longer are you going to torture me with this? Yeah, shit? I know. It was he was dissing Wolf Blitzer, but yeah, this was written by Pelosi's team. Um, Deep State MSN NCBS <laughs> sucks. Yeah, make a fucking deal. Okay, get those twelve hundred dollar checks out there. Take what you can get, and they're just trying to get it uh, to where it's at two hundred two trillion, right? That's that's what they're holding out for. Is is uh, you know is what is it four hundred billion or two hundred billion more? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. But, you know, running the risk of, sure, I think Donald Trump did mean it. I don't think he was lying. The, Lawrence, I think he wants to get the biggest damn fattest thing he can before Election Day. Of course. And the Democrats yeah. are running the risk, and people are losing their shit now. And they're playing chicken. They're playing chicken. It's too late. I, They've already swerved. It's done. Yeah, I I think if... if, if I will be surprised if we do not have a stimulus bill that passes in the next seven days. I'll be surprised if we don't, because the pressure's on both fucking sides right the, now. The, the pressure is on both sides. Uh, just kind of go, going back a little bit, Chris Foster is over on the Twitch, says they are refining solar panels now so they don't have to use rare earth minerals and they can be made out of recyclable materials. It's not perfect, but it's an improvement. I'm all for it. Turn me on to it. I'll I'll yeah. I'll make a suit out of recycled shit if I can help the planet. So yeah, right, right. on. Um, right. Yeah, I don't. Before we close out of this, I just want to show you MSN bullshit. The fossil fuel pharmaceutical military industrial complex sponsored media is giving you this, and on the other side, you got the same fossil fuel pharmaceutical and military industrial sponsoring that. So take from it what you will, but this was bullshit, chicken shit, and I'd like to see. I'd like to see Lawrence O'Donnell and Wolf Blitzer in a room with some of our social media pundits, people, having a little debate. And I bet you we'd kick their ass. Honest to God, in, some, yeah. in a neutral place, we would kick their ass. They'd be all upset because their fucking ivory tower that gets them $7 million a year plus would be shattered because they'd have to be in the public square with the rest of us who are getting fucked daily. Lawrence O'Donnell gets limousined to work back and forth every day. He gets his oh, meals brought fun. to him on a silver platter. He's another Rachel Maddow. He's another whatever those things are over at Fox are called. They, they treat them. They pay them to push propaganda that's it i gotta get off of it it's making me yeah crazy. we gotta move we got a lot of stuff Oz. yeah okay all right all right you, uh, you've been monologuing today. i've been monologuing i need to show i need to i need to stop it i need to go um what uh we this one right here i just want to show everybody lindsey graham and diane feinstein they are practicing social distancing oh yeah they're practices yeah they are yeah they're doing their thing they're doing what they need to do and uh if it kicks over that'd be great um did they take it down? I think they took it down. Oh, they didn't want us making fun of it. They didn't want us making fun of it. We just watched it in the green room. Oh, my God. Anyway, Lindsey Graham. You never know with Twitter. It, Lindsey Graham. It, uh, yeah, they've been. Yeah, anyway. Let, oh, I've got the screenshots for Beauty and the Boomer. So all right, that's fine. I, I've tweaked them a little bit. That's fine. Let's get this out of here and get back to business. Uh, we've got Honest Jesus Government. Where are we at? We've got this one. What is this? Ah, uh, when the DNC asked me for a donation or to vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> God dang it. Is that Ray Liotta? And who's the that other? That is. That's good fellas. Oh, good fellas. I like that. That's good. You what... think I'm a funny guy? You think I'm a funny guy? And yeah. did I bring this or did you bring this? I brought this. If you guys didn't catch it, Jimmy went on Tucker Carson uh, on Wednesday night and directly gave a message to Trump because we all know Trump watches Tucker every night. I miss Tucker's bow tie. Yeah, I kind of do too. For sure, we're happy to have him with us tonight. Jimmy, thanks so much for coming on. Oh my on. God, Jimmy's on Fox. So it's, I, I guess it doesn't, I mean, I, I hope that I'd be principled enough that if a president I despised 
you know, if Elizabeth Warren were president, <laughs> that I would be as offended by this as I am now because it's an attack on our system, oh, a system that we should probably keep a pretty good hold on. What's your view of it? Well, I, I think it's great that when um, on, when a president orders a troop withdrawal, that's up for negotiation with anybody in the military. I, that's just sounds great. Maybe Mark Milley is uh, is one of these resistance grifters, and he's writing a book he's planning on selling to those resistance people. Now he stood up against Trump trying to end a war because that, oh, that's what it seems like. Anybody just and here's the weird thing: Donald Trump, you have to end some of these wars. You have to pull these troops home now. Yes. You are the he's the commander in chief there's no excuses people are sick and tired of these wars and he's got to take on the establishment tucker that's what won him the election in 2016 you know in the primary trump was able to smash the bush dynasty and the republican status quo and now he can't handle a few military war hawks and mitch mcconnell i say he can you know he promised why he got elected was he promised to give everybody health care and end those overseas wars and, and invest that money back home well right now president trump there are millions and millions of Americans who don't follow you on Twitter who are hurting, who needs a check right now. And take those troops home. Give that money to the people. If Nancy Pelosi offers 1200 you double it. Put your name on that check. People need help right now. You know how weak it looks that you're trying to position, position yourself as a victim to Nancy Pelosi? And take those troops home. Take that money. Get it in a stimulus check. Give it to the people right now. Time, the time is ticking. Now is, you know, if he would have given us health care, he missed his moment they're going to whoever gives the american people health care they're going to put on mount rushmore he missed that now it's time to take those troops home and invest that money back here now people are hurting you tell the senate the gop in the senate and mitch mcconnell to do their job and get a stimulus to the people and he'll put his name on it whatever nancy pelosi offers double it that's what trump would have done in 2016 he needs to do that now I love it. I, 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 I love it's it. so hilarious. You're a lefty who I'm sure is not voting Trump, who's giving him better advice <laughs> than any Senate, than almost any Senate Republican, any congressional Republican, any Republican in Washington. I think you're I think you're absolutely right. Jimmy Dore, thank you for that. Now, you My know, pleasure. Trump heard Anytime. that, right? And Jimmy so talking directly to him like uh, uh, you're you're playing victim to Pelosi. Why don't you just man up and, and, and tell these military leaders what you're going to do? You are the commander in chief. I love it. I, he went straight for his ego. Jimmy knows that Trump is ego driven. I really hope that some of this resonated with Trump. I do, too. And being that, uh, you know, Trump is uh, watching <laughs> Tucker all the time. It's like Jimmy has a better. He talks more to Trump than Nancy right. Pelosi he does. He's lying to Trump via, yeah. via Tucker. Yeah, this is why I say, I, you know, you trash social media and all of our friends, all of our actual press who are out in the streets doing things all you want. They have the pulse of the public, not these goddamn corporate tools in the mainstream media. So and Jimmy's right. Whoever gives the American people Medicare for all will get their face on fucking Mount Rushmore. Oh, yeah. I, I'll actually wheel up there in my wheelchair and start chipping away at it myself. <laughs> right. I mean, that's, yeah. I, I, and I'll use my dick as the, as the file. So there you go. Um, <laughs> that was visual we did not need scary visual, right. terrible, too, too much information. Now, don't worry. It's, it's tiny. Uh, it is good that Tucker gives Jimmy respect. And, you know, Jimmy takes a lot of shit for going on Fox News, but time and time again, Jimmy goes there and enlightens the Republicans with the uh, where the stance of the populist American people are. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad that was a great segment. Thanks, Shanda. Um, yeah, like I love it. Now, this is something this is really important. <laughs> yeah, I saw this. So 33 years ago today, uh, this little girl do fell down a well in Texas. This I is remember. baby Jessica. I remember baby Jessica. She was so cute looking up that hole. It was, yeah, I'm so glad. And uh, Yeah, I, I'm glad they, you know, she's had a good life. And I remember that the whole, that was back in the days of media where the whole country would hear one story from three stations and it, you know, it was all the same, right? Yeah. We were being propagandized, but we didn't realize it. Yeah. We, we, we were healthily propagandized. Let me, let me get a close. Is she related to Liam Neeson? I'm just curious. <laughs> no. Does she look like Liam? A little bit. A little bit. I, I don't know. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, just to make you feel old. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Trying to make you feel I old. feel old. You know, you first you hit me with D.B. Cooper, and now you're hitting me with Baby Jessica. What are you going to yeah. do? Hit me with Charlie Chaplin next? 
Yeah. Oh, I'm a big Chaplin fan. Yeah. I totally would have dated him when yeah. I was. Yeah. Well, I life. think I think Robert Downey Jr. far and beyond did oh the best. Oh my God, best. Chaplin! Yeah. That was one of the best movies, and I think that was his best performance. It was. Today. It was. That was his best acting performance yes, ever. It was I don't. Brilliant! Well, I loved lo it. Love Iron Man, less than zero, but Chaplin. Right, right. Chaplin, that was it for him. Uh, and I would. I, I hope the prison movies come out soon. Uh, what is this? The Grifters. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You put these clips in there. I did this? What the hell? Oh, you did. Oh, no, I brought these. You're going to love this. Right, folks, Lincoln Project. Talk about the Lincoln Project because they have been getting under my skin. I think namely because nobody in mainstream media is doing their job. Nobody is challenging them. And as a result, all of their careers have been rehabilitated. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure that most of you who are watching this already know, the Lincoln Project is a super PAC that was created by ex-Bush administration officials, and these are right-wing grifters. There they are, are no cuts in this. They are off of the anti-Trump grift. Okay, well, they are to much the like uh, you tell me Anna when. Navarro on CNN, basically. They became famous for hating Donald Trump, even though they're conservative. So we're supposed to think that they're inherently good because they don't like Donald Trump. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then the bar is much more lower than I had already thought. But the reason why they're getting so much praise is because liberal networks like MSNBC are praising them, giving them yep. falling coverage for doing the bare minimum, being anti-Trump. And it's gotten so bad that normies are now starting to buy into this grift. I see people in my own social circles who are centrists and liberals praise the Lincoln Project and talk about how wonderful their ads are, <laughs> that they've been a bright spot of the 2020 oh, election, that the cream they of should human know kindness. how to clap back on Donald Trump and own him. This is going to make me lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and cut it there. We should not be rewarding people who are lucky to not be in jail right now. I, right, yeah, exactly. I agree, absolutely. absolutely. So we, you can skip the next one because I don't know why the cuts weren't on these, but you know, yeah. we built the deck a couple of days ago because we've had so much going on. But the point is, is you've been screaming at me about the Lincoln Project for many months now and it's finally starting you know, to, to surface and bubble in the progressive community of, come on, you guys, why the hell are we listening to a bunch of Republicans? Yeah, I yeah, it's the Lincoln Project. They're not good people. <laughs> they're no, not, they're, they're Republic. Well, you know, they're the moderate Dems, but without their, uh, you know, their 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 veil over their faces. Yeah, I would. I would I, say hoods, but yeah, I would say yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're they are the new Democratic coalition. Is the Lincoln Project, and they're they belong also, in jail. A lot of them do. A lot of yeah. them uh, were part of that. Bush lying, you know, getting us into uh, wars. And yeah, I think. Oh, Al Walski. Al, 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 Al. Um, let's go here. We have a. As soon as it comes up, I'll put it up. Uh, we, like I said, we don't have the boneheaded ideas of the week. Although I'll give an honorable mention to Nancy Pelosi for not uh, cutting a deal and holding out for. Yeah, thinking that she can handle the art yeah. of the deal. Yeah, so there you go, Nancy. There's a self-portrait of Nancy there. Uh, we have a Wipey Award. You brought this, right? I brought the Wipey Award. Who is? You want to read Caitlin it? Caitlin Johnstone. And she says George W. Bush's entire cabinet should be in prison for war crimes. Instead, they're out in the open, free as birds, demanding that those who expose Bush's administration and war crimes be censored by uh, monopolistic oligarchs. I love Caitlin Johnstone. Her and Kathy. We got to check out Kathy Copeland Padden, too. She needs She's to. She's just as good. Yeah, she needs to be on the Wipey Award more than she is. I got I to gotta, I gotta watch She's her. She's got quite a few Wipeys. Yeah, she does. I want to get her back up there. I think. Uh, her potty mouth progressive yeah. um, page on Facebook's hilarious. It is terrific. Uh, Kathy Copeland Padden. And I tried to get her on our own show, but she's kind of shy. She, yeah, she is very shy. I've tried, too. Yeah, so we maybe we'll get an interview someday. So that's that's my dream. I don't want michelle obama or barack i want kathy <laughs> copeland padden and caitlin johnstone those are the two i want who do you want caitlin's pretty uh pretty shy too but jimmy's had her on a couple of yeah times. jimmy has had her on a couple of times who, 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 who if you had your dream person to interview who would it be i don't know i think i got one of mine yesterday which was shama sawant um yeah i i really respect that shama never sells out her ethics she's always right there with the people and, and that's how she gets the win she she does she's she's very controversial and, and a lot of people i've never seen somebody hated 
as much as she is. I mean, you can go on any post locally in Washington state from any of our local affiliates and the people that dogpile and the type of hate, I mean, the death threats, the, uh, it's just vile. And for her to be able to stand strong in the face of such, you know, oppression and, and hate is, is just, I admire it. I think I've got three that come to mind. And one of them would be Roseanne DeMauro of the National Nurses United. Uh, I've had a conversation with Roseanne. She's a sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I would like to have Medea Benjamin. And uh, I guess the two guys that I'd want to interview most would be, of course, my boyfriend. Your boyfriend, Chris Hedges, and Max Blumenthal. Maybe yeah, I would have to add Cornell West to that, even though yeah, Cornell yeah, West yeah, is yeah. trying to be in dodgy right now with his support Biden. Yeah. I still find him so intelligent and so informed. Yeah, Aaron Matei, as long as Aaron Matei lets us yell at him as much as he lets Jimmy yell at him. So that, that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be fine. That'd be fine. What, what we've got here, this is uh, a little clapping back by... Uh, 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 Ro Khan is lovely, according to Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> lovely. What does lovely mean when you disagree with somebody? Oh, he's lovely. So, anyway, let's see what they. Got. Oh, that's like oh, bless your heart. Down bless your south. heart. It's Just insult, yeah. bless your heart and fuck off. Okay, yeah. here we go. All right, we've been covering extensively here the state of the stimulus negotiations. Of course, the current state of play is we're basically. Wait a second here. We're gonna let Ro wait for a second. I'm not gonna run very much of that. Al Walski, I want to talk about this. $20 from Al Walski, a few dollars while available before the impending winter economic collapse and mega pandemic deaths. Keep the lights on will be more difficult. Keeping the lights on will be more Sure hope I'm wrong. I sure hope you're wrong I as hope, well. I hope you're wrong too. Al, you Al, sincerely, thank you for the 20 spot. And yes, we agree, absolutely. And... I'm going to say it again, and I'm sure some people won't like what I'm going to say. Um, but for all these shows, all supporting social media, as much as we say, please support social media. Do not cut yourselves too short, please, because that extra five or ten bucks might be something you need to get a little gas, a little food, a little something. So be careful. And, and again, if there's any change left in the couch, throw it at us or your other social media people. But be careful. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not trying to classist anybody about who's got money and who's not. Just be careful. And thoughtful folks like Al and Sirius and, and so many others. Uh, the Convo Couch right here. We got, oh, shit. Convo the Couch. The Convo Couch is in the house. The Convo Couch is in the I bet that's Fiorella. I, I bet, bet you it's Fee, too. I hope she's been watching. We. I know you guys got suspended. You are more than welcome to come on our platform, any of our shows. I left you guys a message earlier. Please, you guys are more than welcome here. Yeah, well, absolutely. And if you don't want to come on our show specifically, we would love to restream you uh, to our five platforms and promote you. Uh, we said at the beginning of the show, if you didn't see it, roll it back, take a look at it, see if you agree with what we said. Because we fucking mean it. And like I said before, we told Pasta, Fee, and Johnny, if they win, if they get the message out, if they do the reporting, then we all win. They well, are the yeah. press. We are the press. You are the press. Not getting the truth out and, and nothing more for any of us. Yeah, absolutely. And this is this is exactly what we're talking about. Thank you so much. Five dollars from the Canva Couch. We got suspended for a week. Strike for a Wayfair story four months ago. Are you fucking kidding me? Right, which is just insane because ugh, just the fact that they're coming after you for Pizzagate revolve, you know, stories. Come on. Yeah. It's if there was no validity to that story, then why the hell are they coming after you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we covered that in the beginning of the show. Censorship is on steroids to, thanks to a shit pie, thanks to the corporations controlling mainstream media and the damn the yep. bags of shit that are that are speaking for them. So again, please support our friends at the Convo Couch. Fee, Pasta, Johnny Sue. Get over to the Rockfin. I know Get a lot of people. Over you guys to the Rockfin. Sign up. But if you know what? Sign up. Sign up through whoever you want to sign through. Sign up through the combo couch. Sign up through us at Uphill Media. I don't care. I care about what you need, what we need. We need to become strong together. We need to support like our group hosted uh, Fee and Johnny Sue up in Seattle when they came up, Amber and uh, and and Franklin. 
you can do that where you're at too. If if Fee and and the group needs to come there, or some of the other social media, Kevin from Black Bear, if he wants to do environmental stuff, yeah. Chris, if you can do that, you know, give him a spot. Please do because that's so much help, and we so appreciate it. So let's get it. That's out how there. this network works, you know. As a progressive, I've had to crash on some couches, you know, in Chicago with people I've only met on the internet. Uh, you know, it's it, it takes it takes a community, it takes a family, you guys, to do this. And so, yeah, open your wallets, open your homes, open your hearts. Let's get this. Uh, yeah yeah and there's always there's always points where we're going to have contention but you know that's part of it we're not a goddamn choir so if you disagree tell us um oh they do yeah yeah absolutely (laughs) (laughs) inform us make us smarter anyway if that's possible i'm going to skip that rokan anyway rokan yeah go ahead yeah we're running so late yeah he slapped back on nancy pelosi and it was just anything but anyway shanda last uh, announcements 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 what do we got? Announcements. What do we got? So we got No Joke with Marcus. No and Joke. Comos. Yeah, No Joke. Uh, in the morning. I don't know. Do we have a guest? I know the last few weeks we've had a guest. I don't know if Marcus has got a guest. I haven't looked at the deck yet. It might be Oz. It might be Oz. Maybe Oz. Maybe you'll be stuck with my mug again tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, I, I, I'm the one who gives up the chair because we love having guests on the combo couch. And I I get screen burn here. I'll I'll end up being red. Can I tell you? It's so funny watching your head want to explode behind the scenes because you want to say something so bad and you're just like bubbling up like, and you're not on camera. A lot of times you'll just like screw it. I'm gonna well. Anytime it. a guest comes on and starts uh, trying to qualify Russia Gate, I just about oh. take off through the ceiling here. And that's that's the one thing you want to get Oz to explode behind the camera. Start propagating that Russia Gate horseshit. And that's why I can't vote for Howie Hawkins. You know, I'm a friend of Howie Hawkins. I have the opportunity to vote for somebody who is I'm actually friends with. And I can't do it because of his stance on Russia game. Yeah, I yeah, you, you can't play their game. Do not play their game. That's that's all I can say. So we got no joke tomorrow. What do we got tomorrow night? No joke. And then we got Beauty and the Boomer after dark. Oh. I don't know what you've got planned for tomorrow night. It's gonna be a surprise for me too. And then Halloween is gonna be so off the hook, you guys. We have been working so hard on Halloween. The graphics are looking awesome, the costumes are coming together. It's gonna be amazing. It's yeah, we uh, Shanda and I worked on our intro. Um, yes. last, on the intro last a night. lot of fun a lot of fun uh, Melissa says you can rely on that Oz laugh 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 She, yes Melissa we count on you. you Melissa you would be a great fact checker don't you think Melissa would be a great fact yeah, checker yeah Melissa fact checks our ass all the time yeah that's why we love Melissa <laughs> thank you Melissa anyway um, yeah tomorrow night I'll have to see if my pasties came in the mail or not your pasties uh, nah, no I promise I won't do that to you <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get up with that double. It's after dark. It's yeah. after dark. It's after dark, and so uh, yeah. And Halloween, yeah. Shanda and I worked on a great opener for the Halloween party, and we've invited the Convo Couch and all of our friends in social media to ch- at least check in on Halloween. All of you, all of you are invited. If you yes. want to come in the green room, dress up in your costume or not, stop yeah. by. You we'll, guys can hang out. Yeah, We're we'll drop a Zoom link for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. We will pop you into the show with your costume and we might even have a costume contest what do you think about that right. that's what i was yeah, yeah that's a, a good idea so yeah contact uh me oz at raw media live that goes directly to shanda too so we have those things and uh we don't have any accidental activists last tonight because we had it yesterday at 11 a.m with kashama Sawant, which was great uh and i think i'm gonna bring some clips tomorrow night okay. shama shama dropped so much knowledge on us in an hour it's uh, it's almost hard to process it. She gives you so much, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Sunday night, I'm going to be engineering the national OR meeting. I think. I think oh, Sunday yeah, night. Yeah, our Rev is yeah. having a national. Yeah, meeting. I'll I'll be engineering that, and I won't be drunk because it's Sunday night, and I've got to get up and do nothing again Monday morning except for the dive. Anyway, I think that's it. Are we done? Are we done? We done? We done? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think so we cut a few things. I cut the super spreader story. Which, yeah. Uh, you know, we all know who the super spreader is. He's yeah. still out there spreading yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. We try and keep it to a maximum of 90 minutes, and we're right there. Um, we do have something unique, and no, I haven't been dropping acid today. Okay. <laughs> not lately, anyway. No, not lately, anyway. So this is uh, our outgo is, is a cover of Pink Floyd's Sheep. And you know how hard it is to find a cover of these major record labels? Oh, my God. That sounds good. That's yeah, not copyrighted. Yeah, this is this is insane. But anyway, 
Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Convo Couch. Thank you, Al Walski. Thank you, Sirius. Sirius. Yeah, uh, everybody. Thank Dan you. Dan. Barbara. Billy Love. Chelsea. <laughs> Our fact checker. You guys rock. Our fact checker, Melissa. Jordan. Buck. Jordan Allen. Jordan Allen. Yes. Okay. Snorky. Got to get All of our peeps over at the Rock Fan and all of our people at the Twitch. I yeah. see you. Yeah. Okay, let's get that word out for the Convo Couch. Show them your full support. Please do what you can. Replay their stuff. Do whatever. Get them on Twitter, trending, whatever. Yeah, tear YouTube up on Twitter. Yeah, just burn YouTube down on that. By the way, YouTube, we're talking about you. So go ahead and take, take <laughs> us out. Too. Come at us. Come, Come at us. Me. We'll just join our peeps over at Rockfin exclusively and bring more people over there. Anyway, right. Pink Floyd's Sheep Recreated. This is a smaller version because the main version is 10 minutes it's long. Thank you, Shanda. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. That was fun. Did you <laughs> did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that? Guess oh, you know, whenever you tell YouTube to f off, this is what you get. So. See, don't. I, we, I said bring it on, and they <laughs> said okay. <laughs> I, I think I I got some explaining to do to everybody. Guess what? Our stream got taken down. About what? Uh, third the way through uh, the our closing. Out, our closing segment. And we didn't just get taken down. We got vaporized. Yeah. Uh, so it was either my comment that's, that said, uh, uh, fuck, beep. Uh, and then, um, you know, then we were gone. So we apologize for the abrupt way that we left you. So we created this alternative or alternate uh, ending credits. And uh, we, we switched it over. What are we, we're going to play something else. What is this, Shanda? Well, let's hope we don't get punked on this one. Oh, um, my God. Yeah. This is the monkeys. They de dream believer. Where are the, I can't find it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I, I can see it. Yeah, it's daydream believer and it's by the sugar pills. The sugar pills, okay. sugar pills. And this is, you know, this is a bunch of old farts like me uh, making some pretty good music. So uh, anyway, uh, we apologies for losing yeah. the uh, the dropped acid one. Maybe it's because I said dropping acid. I'm promoting. I think it. it's because I told YouTube to bring it on. Bring it on. Well, they did. They're just laughing. They They're laughing. Anyway, great show today. Apologies. I will put this up if we're still viable. <laughs> After we don't I, even know if we're going to have a channel. We're not. We don't know if we're going to have a channel. Anyway, go over there and support uh, Convo Couch. They got. Uh, they got put in the dirt nap for a week, I guess, uh, on YouTube. For four months ago, so I'm scared of, of oh yeah, they're they're gonna burn us witches at the stake. So <laughs> that's okay. Not the first time. Yeah. So you we may be over at uh, Rockfin and Twitter and uh, all these other places Twitch and the Land of Oz on Facebook. Land of Oz YouTube. of Facebook, and we will be looking for alternative platforms to stream on. So again. Check we us out. We need to get over to DLive. Yeah, yeah, we need to get over to DLive. So we'll do that. Anyway, we're going out with the Sugar Pills Daydream Believer. And thank you for your patience. And I will upload this within the next 20 minutes. Uh, Fight the censorship. Yeah. Stick it to demand. Stick it to demand. <laughs> so much for freedom of the, the press. Oh, I could hide. We're gonna get we're gonna, closed with this. Yeah, we're gonna get like we're gonna get killed again. Never <laughs> Bye rain. guys, have a great day. But it rings and I rise, wipe the sleep out of my eyes. The shaven razor's cold and it stains.
Wolverine.